you know how long Cornhill's been going on here at Churchill? Well, it was going on before I came as an employee, so if I had to guess, I'd say around three years. It's a little bit of a guess. Um, why do you think Cornhill matches bring in crowds of other residents to watch? Well, I think that's because there's multiple levels of participation. So it's one of those kind of activities where if you're really um, able-bodied and active, you can you can participate in that way. If you're not feeling up to it or you're not able to be very, very physically active, you can still participate because you can sit and watch, cheer your team on, or even be the scorekeeper or, you know, I mean, they all, they all sit in here and talk trash and, and, and pick on each other. It's hilarious. <laughs> So there's multiple levels of, of participation. Um, how are the rules changed up a little bit from actual cornhole? Oh, okay. I haven't actually played actual cornhole, but I do know there's some like modifications for our age group of residents. It, it's based on age. So uh, there's a place to stand with cornhole, like how far you can be away from the boards. So that is shifted. If you are 75, then you can stand, you get like a, kind of like a head start. And then if you're 90, you get a further head start. So that's probably the majority of the change. <laughs> Do you think that Cornhole has brought together people who would normally not really associate with each other here? Oh, that's definitely possible. Because, I mean, I can't, I don't have any data, but <laughs> it's definitely possible, especially with the tournaments, because we play <laughs> other residents. Like, we'll have people come from other places. We have a tournament coming up next week that's our people against family members. So, that's going to be fun. But, like I said, um, well, just with the um, levels of ability, like people who are just watching or people who are playing, sometimes those groups can be separated because they don't always participate in the same activities. But since we have this where multiple levels of ability can be in the same thing together, then naturally different groups get intermingled. And one more question. How did the team actually come together? Do they have like tryouts or is it just show up and play? It was kind of just show up and play, but then we had a group of people that were really dedicated and they never missed. So then we thought, okay, well, there were some Olympics coming up last year sometime. Senior Olympics in Statesville. And so we thought we'd get a team name and then we got t-shirts and we entered the Olympics. And so it just kind of became a team gradually, but it was because we had dedicated players. I'm just kind of interested. How did they do in the Senior Olympics? Oh. <laughs> They smeared everybody else all over the floor. <laughs> 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 Say we had nine, then eight people came back with medals. Three of them came back with gold medals, I'm pretty sure, at the Olympics. And so I'd say in the Olympics, they had maybe 60 people. So they did really well, and they were really proud of themselves. So. <laughs> and I do have one question. Um, overall, have you seen like a morale boost of the people that do play cornhole versus other people, other residents here? Well, I definitely lean towards a yes for that because they. Being part of a team is just important, you know, because you know you have a spot and you know if you're not there, somebody's going to notice, somebody's going to ask. Um, and then being active makes you feel good. You've got people cheering you on and then opportunities, like I said, to play against other people. Like it just makes you f feel important and then be important because you're part of a team.